all this, and we got him back. But he was terrified of loud noises after that. So I didn't tap on that original event, which is what it would take in order to, you know, uh, stop the the shivering and the the shaking and the terror uh, in its tracks. Um, but I was able to give him relief in the moment. And yeah. now knowing what I know about EFT and the advanced trainings that I've had, I could have, uh, I have a way that I could have gone back with him and, and helped him at least to relieve some of that, that anxiety um, mm-hmm. around loud noises. So um, in other words, you're saying that if there is a, uh, an immediate trauma, that the best way to deal with that would be the uh, EFT procedures right away after the trauma, in other words? During, if you can. Got it. I tap, okay. I tap whenever I'm stressed, whenever anything's coming up or I'm feeling anything that I don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, student path, right? Anything that doesn't feel good or that's not easy, I tap. I tap every day. Uh, just yeah. Sometimes without even being aware that <laughs> I'm tapping, I just do it as a habit now. Uh, but, yeah, I can do much more focused, intentional tapping on past events in my life and my clients' lives that pop up like weeds, uh, you know, throughout their their current life. And we can pull the weed, um, but if you don't get the root, it's just going to keep popping up. So. <laughs> oh, great analogy. I love that. So the idea being that uh, you can actually uh, perform this EFT on yourself. People can learn how to do that themselves then. It's the easiest thing to learn. In fact, mm-hmm. can I take a minute and I'll teach a real quick technique? This is great, and it's not medical uh, advice. Go for it. It's, it definitely is not medical advice. Uh, this is emotional advice. So whenever you feel stressed or triggered, you can do what we call stealth tapping. So if you take uh, one hand or both and use the tip of your thumb to just tap gently on the ends on the, the side of the ends of your other fingers in, um, in succession. So tap on the side of your pointer finger with the end of your thumb. Tap on the end of your middle finger. Tap on the end of your ring finger. Tap on the end of your pinky. And just five or six taps each finger and just move through the fingers and then start over again and keep going through the fingers. Now, some people do this instinctively when they're stressed, and they might think of it as a nervous habit or a, a nervous tick. But really, instinctively, we know how to calm ourselves. And so this is a really good technique for calming yourself when you're in a meeting. <laughs> you can put your hand under the table, uh, behind your desk, in your pocket, when you're walking around, when you're at a cocktail party, and no one knows that you're actually uh, using this cutting-edge stress reduction technique. You're just tapping on your fingers. Okay, now let me, let me get this down because I've been trying this. So you do this with uh, the thumb, like say the thumb of your right hand. Your thumb mm-hmm. of your right hand goes to the uh, index finger of your right hand, so you're doing it all yes. in the same hand. Okay, because I was the just, same hand. I was yeah. initially using my other thumb to do my opposite hand, so that's, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's fine, too. You know, either hand, the body's bilateral, so it works on either side or both or you're crossing over, whatever you want. But if you want to do stealth tapping because you've got a big presentation, you've got this big radio show, you've got 100,000 people going to listen in, and you want to do it just right, and, oh, my gosh, you're so worried, <laughs> yes. you can just tap. You can even tap right now while you're talking. And if you're tuned into how you're feeling, you can notice a reduction in your stress. Amazing. I'm yeah. doing that right now. This is wonderful. I love it. Oh, my goodness. And it, does <laughs> it matter if you do it with your dominant hand or not? Nope, doesn't matter. Either hand or both. Oh, cool. So if you did it with both at the same time, is that better or worse? I think it's more the merrier, but it doesn't have to be both. It's, again, it. body's bilateral, so you're going to stimulate you know, uh, both sides of your brain, actually. So oh, wow. go for it. Whatever works for you, whatever makes you feel better is the right way to do it. I think that's fantastic, Michael. And that is going to really be something that I bet we're going to get some uh, emails on. And people <laughs> I can, hope so. <laughs> people can tell you 
how they reacted to this uh, really simple procedure of the ESP. I would love to hear stories. Yes, email me at liveyourpurpose at michaelin.com and let me know if you tapped and how it helped you. Or if you have questions, let me know. I'd be love to talk about EFT. It's my mission in life is to share this news about hands and tapping together to make our lives easier and to feel better. Oh, that's wonderful. By the way, I, I've got a couple more things I just have to ask just to make sure that we cover everything. And I thought of something. Are there any ancient cave painting hand art that you could look at? You know, those kinds of things that are almost uh, archaeological. You know, for instance, if someone put their hand in, in mud in the Pleistocene era <laughs> yeah. and then it's preserved yeah. there. Absolutely. Yes, studies have been done on that, and we've talked about that in class with Richard. There are um, yeah, thousands of cave paintings of hands where the person put their hand on the wall of the cave and they had, a, uh, they had paint, some kind of paint or dye in their mouth or in a straw, and they blew it over their hand and then pulled their hand away, and, and we're left with the, the reverse image right, of their hands surrounded by color. Yeah. So what that gives us is uh, big picture information, like it doesn't give us fingerprints, right, because those are too fine. They don't show up. I, I need the actual, you know, actual photograph, or I need the actual finger, or the skin at least, to look at with a, with a um, magnifying glass. So I can't talk about life purpose as much, or life lesson, or school, but I can talk about hand shape and what that means. And I might be able to tell you, like um, Albert Einstein, you know, this person had a really fiery uh, disposition, and mm-hmm. and they were they uh, were probably spontaneous and may even have had challenges with completing things, or maybe they have a really uh, dominant uh, pointer finger, and that would tell me a lot about their relationship with power. Now, yeah. it doesn't tell me if they, if they acquired power or feel comfortable with their power, but it tells me that they were driven to experience power in all of its shades. Uh, so if that pointer finger is dominant, sticking up, you know, it's sticking up high or it's really long or uh, it's wide uh, or it has, it's high set, then, yeah, that person definitely had, a, had an ongoing and dynamic relationship with, with their own power. Oh, so there's a lot goodness. of things we can tell, but, uh, you know, a lot of things that we can't. When I, when I get the, the prints from the ink sheets, as you know, then I have a lot more detail. Yes. Now, here's uh, a really interesting subject. What if you were able to get a handprint of a supposed Sasquatch? A Bigfoot, because I have I have heard that there are, for instance, uh, handprints on people's uh, windows of their of their trucks, their vehicles that they're in the woods, and they actually have gotten photographs of supposedly uh, Bigfoot hands. Um, would that be something that would correlate to a human hand at all? Do you think? Well, I'm sure there's some overlap. Uh, a huge amount of overlap, I guess. So I would love to see those prints and see what I can see in them. It'd be we, really interesting, wouldn't it? It would. We will have to work on that because I know there are listeners out there that are into Bigfoot and cryptids and that they probably know what I'm talking about because I have seen some actual handprints that have been attributed to uh, Bigfoot from some sighting reports. And if we can get those to you, wouldn't that be a great follow-up show to do with yeah. Michael and Jurassic? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. That would be really fun. I wonder <laughs> if Bigfoot has a visibility life purpose like you do. Oh, my because goodness. He, he hides out an awful lot. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and, of course, you know, I have heard uh, of, of Bigfoot researchers coming up with... Uh, footprint casts that have actually got the dermal ridges uh, in the foot, uh, in the cast of the, uh, of the Bigfoot. And I'm wondering if, do, do feet correlate at all to hands as far yeah, as the feet, mark? 
They do. They do correlate. Um, there are people who study feet and the, um, I wouldn't call them fingerprints, but you know what I mean, uh, the prints in the feet and the shape and, and yeah. the characteristics and lines in the feet. You know, Mike, there are people who study hair. <laughs> they can know a lot about a person, their personality, how they solve problems, how they uh, express themselves emotionally by the texture, color, shape, curliness or straightness of hair. Oh, my goodness. There, there are people that read faces. Mm-hmm. Uh, for you know, uh, clues about your your psychological makeup, and uh, people read different parts of the body. I just happen to read hands, and uh, I'm just so glad that I do because it helps me relate to people better, and it gives me something really fun to talk about at parties. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now this is the last thing. How about? The handprint of a ghost. Oh my ever, gosh! <laughs> have you ever heard of that? I haven't. Because I, I haven't. Do you have one? Well, I don't have one myself, but I'll bet my listening audience does. And the reason I'm saying that is that there have been these uh, pictures, for instance, in the windows of old haunted houses that that basically have. Uh, visions or, you know, uh, uh, look like representations of of ghosts in the window. And a lot of that uh, has to do with how the glass works because glass will take in color and light and actually become a negative almost and give that kind of impression. But I have heard that people have seen handprints on windows that are attributed to ghosts. And if we can get some of those, I'm going to send them to you. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Well, that would be incredible. I thought that would be interesting. And I think, you know, again, I go back to it doesn't really matter what what you believe, but anytime there's a handprint available, uh, there's information that mm-hmm. that I can read. And, and anybody who studied, you know, with Richard Unger or Pamela Landers or anyone else from the International Institute of Hand Analysis can tell you a lot uh, about that person, whether they're uh, living, uh, dead, uh, in the form of a dog, in the form of Bigfoot. Uh, you <laughs> haven't asked me about an alien, so I was expecting that question to come. The oh, alien there you go. Wouldn't that be fascinating? <laughs> Definitely. Well, we, oh, yeah. we are going to keep you busy is what we're going to do here, Mike Lynn. And <laughs> now that we're getting to the end of the show, can you believe how fast three hours went? I can't believe it. I don't know, uh, I don't know what I was worried about. Exactly. But then again, I do have the worry marking in my hand, so that's what oh. I tend to do. I inherited that from my grandmother. Thank you very much, Grandma. <laughs> of course. Well, listen, as we wrap up here, let's uh, spell Michael in again for everyone and also give them the information on how they can contact you for the hand analysis that you do. Sure, I'd love to. Uh, www.michaelin.com. Michaelin is M-I-C-H-E-L-Y-N, michaelin.com. And through my website, you can uh, send me a message, uh, send me an email, um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Michael and Jurassic Pathfinder. Uh, Jurassic, yeah, neither of my names are easy, uh, but once <laughs> you learn them, you tend not to forget them. So Jurassic is uh, kind of like the park, but it's spelled with a G-J in the front. So, yeah, yeah Facebook is a great way to, to, to have chats, and uh, my website's a great way to access. And uh, let's to make sure the website is... Is it live with or live your purpose uh, at michaelin.com or is it www.michaelin.com? It's just michaelin.com. My email is live your purpose at michaelin.com. Perfect. There you go. Now we've got all your information out there for the world to contact you, and we are going to find out a lot more about our neighbors in other countries and our neighbors next door, just because you've been on this show. So thank you very much for being with us. (laughs) 
Oh, you're welcome, Michael. Thank you for this opportunity to spread the word about hands and EFT tapping and uh, all the good work that uh, that Richard Unger has done and 